Okay guys, let's go through this model sheet by sheet so you can see what's in it. So the intro is, again, this is gonna give you some general advice about how to do the model, give you some tips about what the sheets are, what you should be filling in, what you shouldn't be touching with the cell types. And then you can see the architecture. So we've got emails, channel sales, paid and organic, blog and social, which uh, filter into the marketing sheet. There's uh, duplicates for each of these for the supply side and the demand side, so it'll be 10 in total. With your staff, you've got your sales staff, your support staff, and then all the other general staff here. These are sort of automations supporting these. Got three P&Ls, P&L actual forecast and combined, uh, supported by de uh, depreciation and tax sheet. Some automations for the expense calcs. Uh, the marketing is going to drive traffic, which is going to register on your site. Then they're going to convert into customers, and then ultimately pay you money. And you look at the KPI sheets and the charts to make sure that everything was making sense. Next up, um, in the formatting sheet, you're going to be setting out the date of your actuals and the forecast, what your year end is, as well as the currency. So you can pick 17 different currencies. The base model is in US dollars. Uh, if you want to change it, you can get the 50 folds macro, press to select whatever it is that you want. So I don't know, Indian rupees. Press currency swap, and after about a minute, the entire um, model will be reformatted into the one that you want. Now on the control sheet, you can have up to have lots of detailed or simple versions and everything in between for how the model is going to work. So you can turn the staff sheet, for example, into the detailed version or the simple version, which you'll see later. You can turn sheets on and off with just by doing a click. So support staff, you're not doing that anymore. Sales team, not having a sales team anymore. And basically those are not going to filter into the model anymore. So you don't have to worry about them or basically zeroing them out. Uh, with revenues, we've got uh, four revenue streams on the supply side, and we've got six on the demand side. So transaction revenues, members revenues, listings, and payments. Demand side, similarly, but a little bit more. We've got transaction affiliate members, listings, payments, and ad. You can choose you know, which streams that you want to have. So if you don't have ad revenue, you can just you know, turn it off, and then you're not going to make money from ads anymore. Okay. Now, coming to the marketing, we've got four ways that you can actually do your registrations and all the marketing. Marketing sheets driven is the most detailed one where you're going to fill out all the sheets. Manual supply and demand, you're not going to basically touch any of the marketing sheets and you're just literally going to type in how many registrations you're going to get every month and growing that number up uh, month on month for both the supply and demand side. So that's the less technical one, easiest one to fill in. Ratio to supply means that you're going to fill in all supply sheets and then you're just going to whack in a multiple or ratio to the supply for what's going to happen on the demand side. So if you're going to say for every one supplier you get, you're going to acquire three uh, uh, customers at $28, and three times 28 is going to be what your marketing cost is. Right? And three is the number of drivers you're going to get for every single uh, supplier that you have, and vice versa for demand. So you fill in the demand sheets, and then you just whack in a multiple for that. Now, for the marketing, you can... Again, do that a basic and detailed. And you can turn all these sheets on and off as well, all right? So that's what you're going to start out with. You can start out with, say, a simple sheet if you want, and then make it more detailed over time, um, however you want to do it, what suits your business. So just have, have a look at how the formulas work, what you want to fill in, what you know, what you don't know, and then you can ultimately decide. P&L actual is pretty simple. You're just going to whack in your headline numbers. All right, we'll ungroup this now. So the supply side, the demand side, the transaction GM, uh, G GMV, your gross transactions, how much revenue you're doing on sides. If you've been doing discounts and vouchers so far, cancellation rates, what your COGS are, your paid traffics for marketing, if you've got bad debt credit card fraud and what your other operating costs are. And you know, if you fundraise, you're gonna whack in what those numbers are, okay? The only things that really feed through the model are going to be your number of suppliers and customers. So that's going to build off in future forecast sheets. The forecast sheet is where everything is going to uh, feed into it. There's only basically three things, you, assumptions you'll be making here, discounts and vouchers, cancellations, bad debt, credit card fraud. And then whenever you plan on fundraising, you put that in for cash flow purposes. And if you just uh, ungroup this now, you can see that there's more detail, everything filter in. All these little green cells are feeding what's in your model. And the combined sheet basically just combines the actual and the forecast here. So we can see here are the actuals, then your forecast starts here. So these are pulling out from the forecast, these are pulling out from your actuals, and that's all dynamic using like crazy formulas. 
the PNL of the deck is just something that you can do whatever you want with yourself, stick it in your presentation, use it as a summary, whatever. It's not an important sheet, I just made it for shits and giggles. Depreciation and tax, yay, okay. So this is uh, basically investment banking style, what I did when I was working at Lazard. You can put in your net operating losses, if you've got any net capex here, what your book life and your tax life is, and we can automatically do the difference if you know what that is or you want there to be a difference. And that's just basically going to forecast when you're going to actually pay in tax. In this case, you're losing money, so you're not. Uh, and you also because you've got net operating losses. Uh, I'm feeding a, depre a depreciation into both for your profit and loss, basically, for the accounting. We've got loads of charts, like 163 or something. The charts from every single uh, sheet in the model. We basically use these four is to check why are, you know, are things going smoothly? Are there any weird things happening? Um, and look out for anomalies so that you can go into the model and then kind of improve things. You see here, <coughs> you can see the new suppliers, see what's churning here. So basically it's just slow progressive growth continuing. So you can see basically what's happening. Looking at what your child to paid conversion rates, customer lifespans, you can see it's your supply side is increasing over time, whereas the demand is staying constant. Is that what you wanted to do? If not, go in and check, right? So there's loads and loads and loads and loads of charts. So you can go into the source and use sheet. This is... Uh, basically just going to help you figure out how much money you should be raising for the round on the assumption of what's in the model. Okay, So you can see on a gross and net basis what you want to be having and then there's lots of charts like Marimekos and radar charts and the traditional pie chart seeing uh, the cost structures for your revenues and then you can have a little sense check here to make sure you see where all the costs are coming in here. If you want to check that the model is actually working properly you can see uh, if there's any errors in it uh, if there's a difference between this sheet and the forecast sheet, there's something wrong. As you can see, there are no problems. So my model is all working right now. There are loads of KPIs in the model. Some, I don't know, 200 rows of stuff here. So you can see all your CACs and LTVs. That's not really standard in marketplaces, but we have them anyway. Look at your funnel metrics and headcount and all these things. There's like tons and tons of every basically KPI I could really be thinking of here. Uh, expense calcs are going to be for payment tech costs. So you can say, I know, credit card, PayPal, and then we do bank transfer for some reason. So say 10%. You see, this is going to pop up here. Uh, what is monthly fee, transaction cost, transaction fee per, uh, fee per transaction? Do the same thing for PayPal, bank transfers, and it'll sum up and tell you uh, basically how, what are your payment costs are. Tech here, you basically got two things. You've got your server costs and you've got your email costs. And you can get as nerdy as detailed as you want to. If server costs are a big deal, maybe you build this out. Otherwise, maybe these assumptions are fine. But I stole this logic from a startup, which has raised like 35 million, so it's probably okay for you too. Now here in the staff, important sheet, you've got a detailed and you've got the simple version here. The first one we're looking is the detailed, because I've uh, turned it off or set it to detailed. And set what the payroll and taxes are for everyone when they uh, start, when someone is fired, how much the salary is, bonus, um, if you are planning on increasing money and promising everyone at Series A or something you're going to increase the salary, then you can have an increase in salary and an increase date, and the model will automatically know when to increase that salary. If you're scaling up and need recruiters, then at a certain point, you know, you may need to have recruiters. So if you hire more than five person a month, you can't handle that anymore, in which case you're hiring a recruiter, and the model will automatically tell you how many recruiters you need to hire. Uh, you can whack in all like your R&D team, uh, for sales and marketing, you can add in, if you've got salespeople already, you need to use this title because if you're using the automated uh, sales sheet, it needs to know what your current capacity is to do that, so you don't need to hire more people than you need to. And then here we've got automations to tell you what the staff you need are for channel sales and uh, related team for the salespeople. <coughs> you can have your cogs, and then we've got the automations for customer care and customer success on both sides. And then we've got the general sort of cost in the startup, which are sort of using averages because no one wants to have to you know, count how many pencils people are going to use. Just use averages, makes it simple. No one will complain about this. So you've got onboarding costs, which are basically like a CapEx. So you can see the categories of CapEx, office and stationery, and general stuff. Um, if people are traveling and then whatever various costs that you're going to be having in here. Okay, and you can recategorize things automatically just by using drop down menus if you want to change the titles. Now the detail, let's look at the simple sheet. So we go here and we'll change this to staff sheet to basic. So going back to staff sheet, you see the detailed, no one's hidden out, and now we've got the simple version. So here again, 
payroll taxes for everyone, how many people you have, starting staff, who you're going to hire over time. Uh, we have automations if you want to use them for the sales teams, channel staff, your customer care and customer success teams. <clears throat> and then you just whack in what the average cost of people are going to be, if you're going to increase the salary or not. And that's basically it, other than whacking in you know, your general expenses for your CapEx and you know, general costs per month. And you can categorize those things differently if you want. So that's just the, a really like a lot faster way of filling out your staff. Now, for the automations here to support your your uh, support your uh, general team, we've got the automations for uh, custom care and custom success. So all you need to do to fill this in is say what percentage of your total customers require support every month. It could be one percent, ten percent, hundred percent, or maybe zero percent because you just don't do customer support. So what percentage of need help every month? How long do customer care people spend talking to them? Uh, <coughs> how many hours per day do they actually spend on the phone as opposed to you know having a fag, what, playing with Facebook, whatever? The same logic here for customer success. And they have that again for the demand side for both of them. Now for the sales team, people don't start out as being super productive. It takes them a while to do that and so you have a productivity curve. You can say what the target productivity you want from them, which is how many uh, suppliers they're going to be getting onto the site. And that can you know, increase over time. Say your company gets you know, better known due to branding, etc., uh, and just increase those numbers. Uh, you can automatically set how many, for how many account executives you have, how many sales managers, uh, account uh, sales directors, sales development representatives, account executives you want here. You can see there's none. Um, you can set whoever you want. That'll automatically determine the basis of how you're growing, how many account execs you have, and therefore how many of the other people want. And then you've got all these cohorts then, which are just basically going to be figuring out um, all the math for it. So, uh, great, revenue. So there's a number of revenue streams in the uh, control sheet. You can set which ones you want to have on and off, right? So we'll just assume you're doing everything. So you have transaction revenue. So how much are you uh, charging for the transaction on the supply side? If you have membership, what are you charging per month? And what percentage of those people on your, who are suppliers are actually going to be paying you? If you have listing revenues, for example, I know prior listings, having pretty pictures, or whatever it is you have in your marketplace, you know, you're gonna charge five bucks for a priority listing, <coughs> you set that in. Let's say in future you're gonna to wanna to have multiple photos or something, well maybe the dev team haven't done it yet, so I don't know, multiple photos. I'm not spelling it right, but who cares? Um, we'll say, well, we're gonna launch that in the second month, and so you just set that to one, and then boom, it'll start feeding through, okay. Uh, and then you can do this basically for your uh, basic premium pro users. So what percentage of your basic people are going to use them? How many purchases per month are people going to be doing? And then what do we have next? For payment revenues, if you're going to be charging more than your cost basis, so say PayPal's charging you 2.9, you're going to charge 3%, so you're going to make 10 bips margin on it. You can do that here, okay? So you can set up between do people pay a, a, a payment subscription order and they have a transaction for the payment for that. Say Upwork, I don't know, give you unlimited uh, free transactions if you pay them a certain amount a month. Well, what, what is that fee? Do you charge transaction fee? And then you can actually then set for the different revenue streams, what are you actually gonna charge a percentage of on those for transaction members and listing revenues if you wanna get more technical. Okay, that's that. So on the revenue side now, we've got transactions, affiliate, member listings, payments, and ads. Let's open this up here. There's a little summary. So transaction revenue is the same as we talked before. You just, you know, how many transactions per month people were doing? What's the average transaction price? What's the rake? This will calculate the GMV, which is also then linked to uh, the supply side for some calculations. Because obviously the GMV will be the same. <coughs> Now for uh, affiliate sales, there's going to be say some sort of like s listing type companies who, you know, are not going to be charging listing uh, listing fees. They're going to uh, you know rely on you clicking through and purchasing something, wherein they're going to have a CPA or a CPC relationship with them. <clears throat> so if you're one of those kind of platforms that's doing that, that's technically also going to be your GMV as opposed to the transactions. It's just going to be hosted on a third party site. So. What is the 
uh, or what are the orders per month for CPAs? What are the click the clicks per order to get to CPC? What's the average sales price that's happening to calculate? You know what your GMV is going to be doing. What's the ratio between the two of them that people use? What's the rate from the CPCs that you're going to be getting on here? Uh, membership fees. We talked about the same thing as the previous one. Same thing for listing revenues. Uh, same thing for the payment revenues based on transaction member listing revenues how you're doing it. Uh, here now we've got ads. So if you're making mon money off you know, showing ads on your site, fine. Sessions per month, number of page views per session per user. So they say they're doing 40 per month. <coughs> uh, what type of inventory are you doing? Branded, unsold, direct response. For branded, what's your CPM? What's revenue per client? You can do specific or detailed versions of how you want to do it. Uh, specific here is it seems you've got like banners and distitional to rewards, offer rules, notification, native. You'll understand all the stuff if you are actually you know into the ad business. And then average revenue for advertisers. I don't know how many advertisers you're getting. Then we've got calculations where you can set the basis on you know who's are just general people you know having free access to the site, or is it registered users, or is it going to be people who are actually your customers? And you can pick which option that you're going to want to have uh, for your basis. So give you a couple more options if you're more more detail oriented here about how you want to set things up. <clears throat> Conversion sheet. So once we got traffic, um, we we they convert into registrations and then they're going to become customers. And then here's how you're going to set them up for both supply and the demand side. So the assumptions you're going to have here is are people going to automatically onboard or are they going to have sales support? Okay, and that's only going to be on the supply side and not on the demand side. So you can set what percentage of all your registrations are then going to need to have a salesperson to help them convert into a customer. And you set that here just by setting a ratio. So maybe you're very sales orientated or maybe you're not. You can set what that number is. Um, now for the people who automatically onboard, uh, are they going to be basic, premium, or pro? You can create three avatars, three averages uh, to help you uh, model this out. You do the same thing with the sales supported team. <clears throat> now you can have an adoption curve. So let's say it takes you three months to get everyone, 33%, 33%, 33%. Then you can set that, that schedule of, of how people are going to come on board, or you could say that everyone's going to come in 100% in the first month. Now of the registrations, what percentage of people will actually convert into a supplier? say 70% and then we know how we have. We'll add in our actuals from the actual sheet so that we have a basic number of suppliers on already. Then things can churn out. There's two ways of doing that. Fixed retention method and the percentage churn. Fixed retention just means like, okay, you can hold them for 12 months, which is good for LTV calculations, but it just assumes like literally on that month, everyone goes, not like progressively in between. Whereas on a percentage churn basis, <coughs> people are going to leave consistently every single month. So say 4% of your entire base is going to leave every single month. So there's pros and cons in both. I would just generally use the percentage trend method. Then you back in for how many listings each supplier will have. Um, and there's reasons why you can have larger or small numbers. And then we'll, we'll do basically the entire same exercise now for the demand side, the adoption curves and allocating people between um, uh, basic premium pros, uh, what the adoption curve is going to be there, what the registration is going in, saying we've got the percentage churn method here. For registrations, we're going to turn the traffic into registrations. Um, <clears throat> here I said there's four ways of doing that. So we're using the marketing sheets driven, which is basically just going to take it to marketing sheets and flow through. Now, if you want to do things differently, I mentioned, for example, say we're going to do this as a ratio. So we'll do this the ratio to supply. <clears throat> so go back to registration sheet. And we see that the marketing bit is being blanked out. The manual one, two. So ratioed here. So we're going to say, we're going to fill, what we're going to do is going to fill in the marketing sheets for the supply side. And then here we're going to say, well, three times our supply is, is the number of demand that we have. So demand is 276. The cost for demand is six bucks each. And if we're doing other marketing campaigns, and it's basically a simple way if you're saying, well, I really want to spend all my time on the supply side as and not really focus on the demand side, because once you get the supply, the demand comes. So rather than thinking about it too much, you can just whack in what the ratio is that you want to have, what the kind of cost is going to be. And it's just a simpler way of kind of thinking about it. You can do the exact same thing for the demand side just by clicking the button, sort of looks the same. Or you can just basically do it manually. <clears throat> 
Um, but you have the options within this model to kind of pick and choose how you would like to do things to a certain extent. And the marketing sheets are pretty detailed if you want to. So we'll skip over the simple map here. With a saturation calculator, which I'm not getting into, it basically just augments your calculation if you start really penetration, uh, penetrating markets a lot. <coughs> you're going to put in what the, uh, the, the conversions from traffic to registrations are on your paid blog, email, social, organics here, and they can change over time, however you want to do them. And then you can track what your uh, registrations look like, what channels they're coming through, and all that kind of stuff. Uh, the simple version... Uh, do you tell marketing? We'll go to the basic version. So we'll see the detailed one is now blanked out. Yeah, I'll ignore that, I'll fix it. Um, where are we? So simple. Uh, how many registrations are we getting per month? Where is it coming through? Is it paid or is it uh, earned? What are the costs for these people? Are you doing any other uh, related expenses which are not directly attributable to getting new suppliers? Yes or no. <clears throat> and then it's just basically a lot simpler or faster way of uh, than doing the detailed version. We've got the same thing for the demand side. Uh, for paid organics, you can set out your organics, like how basically how much free traffic you're getting, and this can increase over time. You're going to spend money across different channels, how much you're going to spend, and that can increase over time, so you're spending more at the end non-attribute or, uh, or directly related marketing spend you do, uh, what your CPCs are across different channels, and then you can see what the implied CAC rates are to make sure those numbers are making sense. All right, cool. And then same thing for <coughs> uh, demand side. Then for emails, not super important, but it's a way to kind of argue that your uh, weighted CAC is going to be lower. You can fill in a whole bunch of nerdy stuff to argue that. Same thing on the demand side, blogging, social. <clears throat> uh, when are you getting featured? I don't know, getting into TechCrunch, and so you're going to have lots of features. Uh, how much traffic is going to be coming from those social media, rebroadcasts, and all sorts of nerdy things, which again, just give you the, the options to tweak everything and come up with a logical argument that you want to have with investors about how your business is going to work out. Same thing on demand side. And we've got channel sales, or you know, channel partnerships, however you want to think about it. Well, how many leads are you getting per month? For, um, or how many, how many leads per month can your uh, channel sales people actually accommodate? Uh, you can type in the names of what the channels are, how many leads per month you're getting for them, which can grow here. If it's CPL or a CPA, you can change between them. <coughs> so what's the cost for CPL, or what's the cost for CPA, and see what the different costs actually there are in. <coughs> these can grow up over time, more leads from them over time, and then we've got lots of calculations to figure it out. And then we've got the same thing on the demand side. Okay, guys, so that was a uh, hyperspeed um, walk through what's everything in the model so you can see what you're getting for yourself uh, and see whether or not it actually works for yourself. Obviously, you're not going to understand everything, but the goal of this video is just to let you see what's in it and figure out if this is going to suit your business model. And hopefully, we accomplish that. Okay, keep hustling, guys. Bye.